Hey there, Jacob Perry back with you for episode 33 on this vlog that we're doing on Patagonia, on honey, on beekeeping. And uh, today I have a treat for you because uh, last week uh, when I was traveling the East Coast, I got to meet with uh, Herman Perilla, who is a bee biologist, originally from Colombia, and now teaching uh, beekeeping at an apiculture at um, George Mason University, and he does projects with beekeepers in the Amazon rainforest in Peru, um, with um, local beekeepers in Colombia as well, and in the United States. And um, really an expert in the field, has been in it for, for many decades, and had a lot of really interesting things to say. I learned a lot. Um, I got to ask him lots of questions and hang out. So I'm actually going to turn this over to him. I did a little snor uh, a short snippet uh, asking him some questions and then you guys get to hear his answers and just get to learn some of the cool things that I got to learn this weekend. Cheers. Herman Perilla and I am the director of the Honey Bee Initiative at Germany. And uh, it is an initiative that has to deal with research. Uh, we are trying to find sustainable beekeeping here in Virginia. And we also work on the convergence of people and bees. And we have programs in the United States, in Colombia, and Peru. Very good. Now, can you tell me um, the difference briefly between Apis mellifera and stingless bees? Certainly. Apis mellifera are <coughs> basically uh, northern bees from Europe that were introduced to the Americas in the 1600s and they became very popular throughout the continent. And the stingless bees are indigenous bees, honey bees from the tropics. Uh, the biology is completely different, the structure of the nest is completely different, but both are honey producers. Uh, Apis mellifera, you have like 24 races, but it is one species, while in uh, stingless bees, you have like 34 different species that actually are honey producers. Wow, and what's the main difference in the honey between the two? Basically, honey, the identity of the honey depends on the floral origin. Uh, so yes, that the temperate zone, the tropical flowers, they are different. But besides that, the humidity content is higher on the honeys from the stingless bees. And you have two types of stingless bees, the major and the minor. One's are meliponas and the other one are trigonas. Very good. And uh, among honeys from Apis mellifera, regular honeybees, uh, the ones we would have uh, in the United States and, and in Chile, uh, what what is the main thing that causes difference in the honey? What distinguishes one honey from another honey? Well, the character of each honey depends upon on the flowers that bees collect the nectar from. That's basically it. Each flower has a specific flavor, a specific aroma, and a specific everything for honey. And usually you don't have monofloral honeys, you have a combination of flowers, and that will give a little more complex identity to the honeys. Very good. And what makes uh, honey, some different honeys have uh, di varying levels of thickness? What makes one honey thicker than another, the crystallization? Well, it depends basically on the structure the chemical structure of, of the honeys. Most of the commercial honeys have to have a humidity that goes usually between 16 and 18 percent. You may go a little higher, like 20 to a little lower, 14 percent, but the humidity range is that. But the composition and the complexity of the combination of sugar, minerals, vitamins, and so on and so forth actually makes those honeys particular and unique. Very good. Well, there you have it. You heard from the expert. Um, just a quick summary in case. I know the sound quality wasn't the best, uh, but the first thing we were talking about was the difference between regular honeybees that all of you are familiar with, that um, you you probably have seen in um, some backyard beekeeping operations. They're the ones making the honey that you consume. Um, and these live in, these come from Europe originally, that's what he said. And these are what we have in the United States and in Chile. The other thing he's talking about are stingless bees, which is a different species. They do not sting and they make a very different honey with a high water content. And so it actually can spoil, this honey can spoil, so it doesn't last long, but it's a really unique thing. And they live in the tropics. Um, and after that, he was just mentioning how unique honey can be because of the flower, which is something we've been talking about for a while, and that's what makes our honey so unique. So there you have it, you heard from the expert. 
Um, love to hear any questions you guys have. Always engage with us on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, through our website. We'll see you next week. Bye.